Welcome back to McNulty's Book Corral, where I swig wicked brews out of a John Wayne coffee mug. Uh, this is the original saloon where I swig whatever I want. Uh, welcome back. Uh, if you haven't been here before, I'm supposed to tell you to hit uh, subscribe and like, and I always forget to do that. I actually don't even monitor those things, so I'm a terrible booktuber. Uh, but I have fun, and that's the main thing here. If you're going to do something... Have fun with it. Enjoy it. So let's have a swig. Get going here. Mmm. Yeah, right. Uh, that is a wicked brew today. Um, okay. So today, <clears throat> you know, I thought that I, what I would do is I would give you a little quick discussion on what is this concept of the great American novel. When you talk about the great American novel, of course, it's kind of inclusive because you're forgetting the Brits, you're forgetting the, the Scots, you're forgetting the Welsh and the Irish and so forth. So we'll perhaps get to those another day. When it comes to English literature, what they call English literature, and I believe I've said this before in other videos, I personally hold the view that Charles Dickens is the father of the modern novel. Uh, before him, you have Shakespeare, you have John Milton, uh, you have Chaucer, and then of course after Dickens you get into the angry young men of the 1950s and all sorts of cool things. You get into uh, all sorts of great writers. But for today we're going to just be inclusive here and just keep it to, to this phrase, the great American novel, because you hear it all the time. It's like, you know, Moby Dick. Okay, so I've had a, I have an episode on Moby Dick. When academics talk about the great American novel. This is almost exclusively the first book they talk about. Uh, I agree with that. I think it is a great American novel. My contention has always been, however, that there's more than one great American novel. There's more than one great British novel. There's more than one great Irish novel, Scottish novel, Welsh novel, on and on. Again, today we'll just stick with the, the colonies here, uh, where I'm located. And Moby Dick, I have an episode on Moby Dick, so I'm not going to go into this again. I'm just throwing this out there as a discussion point. Um, I'm going to show you some books that I think fall into the realm of great novels. It doesn't matter that they happen to be American novels. Um, and again, my, my gold bar, the standard that I look at things with um, and, and where I judge from would be the complete works of Charles Dickens. That's me, all right? The great writer Charles Dickens. I was in London a few years ago. I visited his home. I got to see the desk where he wrote some novels. It was incredible, almost, really, almost a spiritual experience for me because I'm such a such a book hound, all right? Um, anyways, uh, there's a lots, of, lots of things that can fall into this really loose category, great American novel. Um, what about Thomas Wolfe? Look, Homeward Angel. All right, I, we don't talk about this this type of thing. These types of books, usually when people talk about, especially the academics and the critics, when they say great American novel, kind of snidely. Uh, that's why I don't like critics at all. Can you tell? I don't think they're happy people. Um, but when we're talking about the great American novel, you should be happy that you think something is that great. Um, with Thomas Wolfe, the Eugene Gant, the tale of Eugene Gant. Here, the 1930s, and of course, Thomas Wolfe was a writer who didn't live long, and we get some beautiful passages. This is basically a coming-of-age story of a, of, a, of, a, of a young man who discovers things about life and his journey, and it's a, and it's a meticulous novel about that journey, uh, much different than Moby Dick by um, Herman Melville. But we get, we get this beauty to the language, and he begins with a stone, a leaf, an unfound door, of a stone, a leaf, a door, and of all forgotten faces. Naked and alone, we came into exile. In her dark womb, we did not know our mother's face. From the prison of her flesh have we come into the unspeakable and incommunicable prison of this earth. Which of us has known his brother? Which of us has looked into his father's heart? Which of us has not remained forever prison pent? Which of us is not forever a stranger and alone? O oh, waste of loss in the hot mazes, lost among bright stars on this most weary, unbright cinder, lost. 
Remembering speechlessly, we seek the great forgotten language, the lost lane end into heaven, a stone, a leaf, an unfound door. Where? When? O oh, lost, and by the wind-grieved ghost, come back again. Thomas Wolfe writing a, a beginning lyrical section to open up the tale of uh, Eugene Gant in this remarkable, uh, remarkable book, Look Homeward Angel. If you have not read Look Homeward Angel, add this to your list of classics to read. This is a remarkable novel. Just fantastic. One of my favorites. I love Thomas Wolfe. Thomas Wolfe reminds me of Another great author who was, in fact, influenced by Thomas Wolfe, and that would be Ross Lockridge, Jr. And I've covered Rain Tree County in another episode, and this is a great American novel as well. It's just a great novel, okay? And when you're looking at, when you're looking at him, it's the flow of the language. It's, it's the story, again, similar to Look Homeward Angel, and it's a story about a, a, a young man coming of age in his trials, uh, his victories, his defeats in life, how it affected him, lost loves and so forth. So dreaming, he held the golden bough still in his hand. So dreaming, he neared the shrine where the tree was and the stones and the letters upon them. And the branch quivered alive in his hands, unrolled its bark, became a map covered with lines and letters, a poem of mute but lovely meanings, a page torn from the first book printed by man, the legend of a life upon the earth and of a river running through the land, a signature of father and preserver of some young hero and endlessly courageous dreamer. Rain Tree County by the long lost but never forgotten magnificent Ross Lockridge Jr. This is, along with Look Homeward Angel, two of the finest novels ever written. It doesn't matter what country they came from. They happen to be American in nature. If you haven't read Look Homeward Angel in Rain Tree County, get into that prose. Get into, the, get into that world and see if you can discover things for yourself that will teach you a little bit about life. Let's get into some more recent novels that I think also fall into the category of great American novels. And I'm not going to read from these two, but I'm just going to mention them to you. Gravity's Rainbow by Thomas Pynchon is one of those remarkable books that when you read it, you'll never forget it. And it's a struggle reading it. This is a, an intellectual work of art uh, here. And when was this first published? This was first published in 1973. And I like Thomas Pynchon in general. I have everything he's published, which isn't that much. Um, and I'm eagerly waiting. He's in his, I think he's in his early 80s now. I hope that he gets out another book. Um, so I'm recommending Gravity's Rainbow as one of the great novels to read on your list. It is a, a, a compilation of incredible ideas, incredible histories, fusions of magical realism, history, uh, biography, historical determinations about war, uh, the industrial war machine, and on and on. Thomas Pynchon uh, lays it on the line with this one. This is one that it's even a little frightening to think at, uh, at the depth of insight that this man has. I think it's a fantastic work. So there we have yet another Gravity's Rainbow. Now we're going to get to one that's really a particular favorite of mine. This is A Soldier of the Great War by Mark Halpern. Mark Halpern is still alive. He just had another novel come out, which I haven't finished reading. And I, th I have everything he's published. I think he is a magnificent writer. A Soldier of the Great War is one of those books that will stick with you forever. Uh, it takes place in... Uh, it begins in Rome in 1964. And it's about Alessandro... Giuliani, and he is, had been a soldier of the Great War, and this is really, this is really his life story. I have a friend who's gone now, and this is actually, I own three, I own three copies of this first edition hardcover because I love the cover so much. When I bought this um, for my friend, her family gave it back to me after she passed, uh, she looked at this cover 
and she, you know, well, I have a scan coming up. She looked at the cover and she said, I can smell the rain, you know, and the book is like that too. The passages are lush and beautiful. If you haven't read Mark Halprin, um, pick this up. This is a great book. This is a great, great novel. These are not books that you're going to read quickly. These are books you're going to savor. You're going to take your time. You're going to enjoy reading them because they're so beautifully constructed. And I guarantee you, you will love these books. Now, for the last one, I better take a sip here uh, because I want to get this going. Mm. I, uh, these wicked brews, you know, come up. Okay. Finally, this is a book called The City of Trembling Leaves. It was written by Walter Van Tilburg Clark, who is best known as the author of The Oxbow Incident and The Track of the Cat. Two excellent novels. Um, and those are always in print. I think you can find them easily. This is in print as well. The City of Trembling Leaves, however, is kind of a forgotten book. And I consider it the equal of these other books that I've told you. It shares a similarity with Look Homeward Angel and Rain Tree County. Perhaps those are my three favorites of all of these. Um, although I'm, pension, is, pension is something else too. Um, this is a coming of age story about a young man, uh, Timothy Hazard, and uh, it takes place in Reno, Nevada. And Walter Van Tilburg Clark was quite a uh, uh, fond of histories and he lived there. And so he talks about the history of this. And this is something that you can um, you can delve into and you're going to get lost in the pages. None of the books that I'm showing you here uh, are books that I think are um, fast reads. So if you're of the of the type or of have the nature of someone that just wants to sit down in a chair day by day by day, perhaps it'll take you weeks, perhaps it will take you a couple of months to do this. Um, these are the books that you can you can take a look at. These are some of the greatest novels ever written right here. Uh, so we have a good selection for you today. The City of Trembling Leaves is just one of those books that stays with you. It's like a, you know, these books are for me, and I can only speak for myself. It's like a good meal. You know, you go out, you have a good meal, and you're thinking, boy, I really, I really enjoyed that. I feel contented. I feel rested from having it. And... All I need now is a is a good drink, and uh, <laughs> and I'll be good to go. Hang on. Okay, so couple of couple of notes here. Um, housekeeping notes. You need to pay attention to this. Um, in the summer, I'm going to have less videos, so I might do two videos a month. Um, I've filmed a lot of those videos already and scheduled them. Um, this video. I have just done, and it's February, early February, so I'm going to post it fairly quickly so I can get these notes out there to you. Um, so you should expect delays in videos as the winter winds down and we get into the summer. Um, and then in the fall, it might pick up a little bit again. Um, in the meantime, um, I'm going to uh, leave you to uh, search these books out. I would be very interested in hearing from anybody uh, in the comments that read any of these and what your thoughts are, um, especially if you liked it, okay? I'm a guy that, you know, we don't, if you don't like it, that's fine too. I don't expect you to like everything I recommend. I'm just telling you, telling you, me, you know, I'm giving you really a look into my life by saying um, The City of Trembling Leaves is a masterpiece of fiction. Uh, you know, my education, my life experiences and so forth, everything I bring to the table puts me in that frame of mind where I'm thinking, this one, wow, okay? Um, Look Homeward Angel, Rain Tree County, and the City of Trembling Leaves, if you want to do three. I really probably should have limited this episode to those three, because those are the three that were on my mind lately, um, having gone back and reread them. Um, I reread Rain Tree County about, what was it, two years ago now? I don't remember. Um, anyways... I'm just this guy that likes to dress up like a B-movie cowboy and talk about books. Uh, so uh, in the meantime, stay well, stay happy, feed your brain. Read one of these books, please.